Okay, so this is the second part of um, graphing sine and cosine with horizontal and vertical shifts. And in this uh, video, we're going to talk about um, the vertical shift. So the vertical shift, just like any other function, uh, if you can remember back in chapter three when we were talking about vertical shifts and we had a quadratic function to move it up or down, we added a value or we subtracted a value from our parent function. Well, the same is true with our trigonometric functions, except we tend to put the value that we're adding or subtracting in front, right here, if you can see this, in front as the first term instead of the last term. That helps with um, not having any um, um, indecision as to whether we're taking the sine of x or we're taking the sine of x plus 3, I mean x plus c. So we usually put it in front so there, there's no ambiguity there. Um, it's very clear that we're moving our graph up or down by a value of c. So this very first example here only has a vertical shift. So we're going to do one example where it only has a vertical shift. We're going to do another example where we combine a vertical shift with, if you remember, A in front. A is an amplitude, so we're going to change the amplitude of our sine and cosine function as well as shifting it vertically. And then our last example is where we not only shift it vertically, but we also have an amplitude change and we have a period change. So we're going to have three things to do in our, in our last example. So let's get started on our examples. And we're going to identify all of our vertical shifts, our phase shifts, and our amplitudes. All right, so in this example right here, I've got y equals negative 1 plus cosine of x. So I'm going to circle my vertical shift. I'm going to put a pointer here for my amplitude where it's supposed to be and a nice pointer here for my phase, uh, not my phase shift, but my, um, my period change. All right, so this is my C value, this is my A value, and this is my B value. So when I calculate my amplitude, it's going to be the absolute value of my a value, which is 1. So the amplitude of this graph is 1. So from a resting position at, at um, y equals 0 or the x-axis, um, this is going to have, it's going to go up by 1 and down by 1 at most. Okay, so now for my period, I am going to calculate 2 pi over b, and b in this case is 1, so my period remains at 2 pi. And now I have a vertical shift that I'm just going to denote as a vertical shift uh, down by 1, or a vertical shift in the negative direction, negative 1. So the very first thing I do when I, when I have a vertical shift is I denote that vertical shift with a nice dashed line on my graph. This is going to be what I call my new x-axis, or you can think of it as, um, as a reminder that you are moving your graph down. So if you graph it on your x-axis and then move your graph down, this is where it's going to fall, and I put a nice little equation for that right there. Okay, so now um, we need to label our x-axis um, and our period is 2 pi. So I'm going to start off by marking off four equal intervals and labeling 2 pi, dividing that in half to get my midpoint, dividing each of those halves into halves to get my quarter and my three-quarter marks. All right, so it does say over two periods, so I'm going to do the same thing backwards. I counted forwards four intervals. I'm going to count backwards four intervals. Okay, so that's negative 2 pi. This is negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, and negative pi over 2.
So now when I plug in 0 pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi to get my first interval, okay, so I'm plugging in these x values, I will get these out for my cosine of x. And in this case, because I'm moving things up and down, I need to add my vertical shift to it. So the cosine of 0, okay, the cosine of 0, and then I'm going to take that and add negative 1 to it, sorry. So 1 minus 1 is 0. The cosine of pi over 2 is going to be 0, and then I'm going to add my vertical shift to it, a negative 1, so I get negative 1 right there on my new x-axis. And then when I do pi, the cosine of pi, and then I'm going to add my negative 1, is going to be negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. And then I'm going to do 3 pi over 2, and uh, if I do the cosine of 3 pi, over 2 and then add a negative 1 to it, I just get negative 1. And then the cosine of 2 pi, um, the cosine of 2 pi is 1. And when I add negative 1, I'm at 0. And you can see how my graph is shifted down by 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate those points over here. This is the beginning right here, and this is the end of my period. I'm going to duplicate those points for my second period. And there's this graph over two periods. Okay, so let's go ahead and now do one where I not only have a vertical shift, but I have an amplitude change. All right, so let's locate our values. Okay, this is going to be my vertical shift out here in front. This, and remember we need to take the sign here, this is going to be my A value. And B is going to be the number in front of X, which is going to be 1. So now let's go ahead and calculate our amplitude. Our amplitude is going to be the absolute value of little a, so it's going to be 2. Our period is going to be 2 pi over b, and b is 1. So it remains at 2 pi, which is nice. And then our vertical shift is going to be a positive 2. So I'm going to start by marking off a nice dash line at positive 2 to remind me that my graph will be shifted up, so y equals 2. <clears throat> All right, I don't have um, a horizontal shift, so I don't have to do my begin and end calculations. So now I'm just going to start at marking off and labeling my x-axis. I have um, 2 pi as a period, so it starts at 0, and I'm going to mark off 4 equal intervals and it ends at 2 pi, and I'm going to label all of my mid and quarter points. And because I have to do two periods, since I counted four intervals forward, I'm going to count four intervals backwards, and I'm going to lay off and label those four intervals. Okay, so it becomes more difficult if we end up having horizontal shifts as well, and we'll do that on the next video. All right, so let's go ahead and calculate at zero. Okay, so at zero, we have this calculation to do, sine of zero. And I know the sine of zero is zero, so when I evaluate this, I get two. At pi over 2, I get this calculation, and I know the sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I end up with 2 minus 2, which is 0. When I plug in pi, I get 2 minus 2 sine of pi. I know this is 0, so I end up at 2.
when I have 3 pi over 2, I get 2 minus 2 sine of 3 pi over 2. I know this is negative 1, so that makes this 2 plus 2, which is 4. So I'll mark it there. And maybe I should add numbers on my y-axis. And then when I plug in 2 pi, I get 2 minus 2 sine of 2 pi. I know the sine of 2 pi is 0, so I end up with just 2. So when I graph this, you will notice that my sine function is upside down. And that's because my amplitude, or little a, is negative, which um, flips my graph over the x-axis. Okay, from the resting position, you can see that it has an amplitude of 2, but the resting position now is at y equals 2. We have two periods to do, so I'm going to go ahead and mark the points on my second period and draw in a nice curve there. All right, and you can see that my graph has been shifted up by 2. And then our most complicated example here. Okay, so we're going to start off by identifying all of our pieces. All right, so we have an amplitude of the absolute value of 3 is 3. We have a b value of 1 over 4. So this time we have 2 pi divided by 1 over 4, which is 8 pi. And then we have a nice vertical shift of negative 1. So we're going down by 1. So I'm going to mark that off on my graph. This is my new resting position. All right, so now I just start. Um, I have to mark off my, my I have to label my x-axis. So I'm not doing a horizontal shift. So it starts at 0, and I'm going to count four paces over equal intervals and I'm going to find the labels of the quartile and midpoints. And I'm also, since it's two periods, I'm going to do the same thing backwards. I'm going to count off four intervals and label the midpoint and the quartiles. And then I get to do my calculations. So at zero, I have negative 1 plus 3 times the cosine of 0 times a quarter is 0. I know the cosine of 0 is 1. So I get negative 1 plus 3 is 2. At 2 pi, I get negative 1 plus 2 pi times a quarter is pi over 2. I know the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, so I end up with a negative 1. At 4 pi, I get negative 1 plus 3 times the cosine 4 pi times a quarter is pi. So I know that's negative 1, so this is going to be a value of negative 4. Okay, and then at 6 pi, I get negative 1 plus 3 times the cosine of 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. I know that's going to be 0, so this is back at negative 1. And then at 8 pi, I get negative 1 plus 3 times the cosine of 8 pi times a quarter is 2 pi. I know that's 1, so this is going to be up at 2. And when I draw in my graph, it's going to look like this. And I'm going to copy my points correctly over for my other period. And there is the graph of negative 1 plus 3 cosine of 1 fourth x over two periods.